All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling story of whaling days and adventure among savages on a strange island. After Paul Parrot himself had led Mr. Grange and the rest of the ship's crew to the rescue of Johnny, Sue, Captain Dalton, Dickon, and Annabel Wilson, our friends were successful in fighting off the savages. Misto, the magician, and Briny, the first mate of the privateer, fled to the other side of the island. Knowing Briny has the diamonds, which rightfully belong to our friends, Johnny Robbins and Sue Grange follow them. On the way, they befriend a vicious-looking jaguar by removing a thorn that is stuck in his foot, and the animal later repays their kindness by protecting them against Misto's black leopard, which has escaped from its cage. When we left our friends, Johnny and Sue were standing by watching the ferocious fight between the two beasts while on the other side stood Misto and a few members of the privateer crew. Stop him! Stop him! He's killing my black leopard! Stop him yourself if you can. I wouldn't go near them blooming beasts in a suit of armor, I wouldn't. He's killing Blackie! He's killing Blackie! Sue, Jackie is sure repaying us for what we did for him. He certainly is. He has that black leopard by the throat. And just look how he holds on. Look, the black leopard's not moving. It looks like Jaggy has finished him all right. Oh, he killed Blackie! My black leopard is dead! It's a bad sign! My time has come! My time has come! The blighter's gone balmy, so help me. Look at him, walking straight for the beach. Blow me down, he's going right into the surf. He's loony for sure, and you may lay to that. Sue? What do you think is the matter with Miss Doe? I don't know. He acts so strange. Avast, Miss Doe, you loony landlubber. What are you doing down there? It's a bad sign. This is the end. This is the end. Ah! Limey, he's jumped in the ocean. Oh, Johnny, he must have gone insane. Now see what you've done. Call that blooming cat off and sail out of here. Call him off, I say, or he'll kill us all. Oh, I don't know whether he'll mind me or not now. Jaggy! Jaggy, come back here. He's minding all right. Now, don't any of you men make a move, and the animal won't hurt you. And you'd better stay where you are until we get away from here, or I'll let the jaguar come after you again. Don't worry. We don't want none of your blooming animal. Come on, Sue. We've seen enough of here. Misto's gone, and we know that Briny was headed for the Paul Parrot. That's right, Johnny. And he still has the diamonds, I guess. I've got an idea how I can get those diamonds back. If I can only get this jaguar to keep on doing what I tell him, it won't be long before Bronnie will be glad to give us back the diamonds. Oh, Johnny, what are you going to do? Well, you just wait and see when we get back to the ship. Come on, Jaggy. After what you did, you can follow us all you want to. Follow me, Ben. Ah, this looks like the path Johnny and Sue took. Hey, Captain, it's getting light enough to see. Avast, look what I see. Hmm? Look, small footprints, Captain. They must belong to the young uns. Those footprints are theirs, all right, Dickon. There's no doubt of that. Blow me down. What's this? Ah, dirty work of foot. Ah, ah. What's wrong, Captain Dalton? Something amiss? I don't rightly know, but look here. In the soft dirt... You can see the tracks of Johnny and Sue, all right. Aye. And right next to them are the tracks of a wild animal. What do you make of it, Captain Dalton? I'm afraid to think about it, Mr. Grange. This animal, whatever it was, may have tracked Sue and Johnny. If anything has happened to Sue and Johnny, I'll never forgive myself. Hold on, sir. There's no use fretting about something you ain't sure of, sir. Those animal tracks could have been made... Even before the young'uns came this way. I, Dickon, you're right there. I surely hope so. Captain Dalton, look. The jungle ends here. Aye, aye, so it does. And look down the beach. And no doubt that's the privateer's camp. Most likely. And these footprints are leading right toward it. Men. Aye, men, stay here with Miss Wilson. Aye, aye. Mr. Grange, aye, aye. you and Dickon follow me. Aye, aye. Lash me to a yard arm, sir. Look. The blooming animal tracks are... They're going right along, sir. There's something mighty peculiar about all this. Avast! Look, out there! What's that laying on the beach? Captain Dalton, it's that black leopard of Misto's. Aye, you're right there. And he's a dead one for sure. That accounts for these animal tracks along with Johnny's and Sue's. Uh, begging your pardon, sir. I, I, I believe you're wrong, I does, sir. 
What do you mean, Dickon? Well, well, now, now, look right here, sir. Now, here are the tracks of Johnny and Sue, and whatever animal it was was with them. Aye. Now, look. Over here, sir, over here are the tracks of this blooming black leopard. And you see where the sand is all mussed up, sir? It means only one thing, Captain. Aye, Dickon, you're right. There's been another animal here besides the black leopard. And whatever it was, it was big enough to do in this animal, amistos. And you may lay to that. I say, you're right, sir. That may account for it, all right. But where have they gone? Blow me down. It won't take long to find out. Aye, sir. Look toward that camp. There's one of them blooming swabs from the crew of the late Mr. Kosh. Aye, I'll hail him. Ahoy! Ahoy! What's been going on around here? Too much to suit me. So help me. It was none of my doings. Did you see anything of the two young uns? Blow me down, I'll say I did. And I want no more of them with that blooming animal of theirs. Animal of theirs? Explain yourself, mate. What are you gammon about? Well, sir, I'll, I'll tell you how I came to know all about it. But you've got to believe me. I had nothing to do with it. Aye. Well, late last night, our first mate, Bryony, brings this blooming swab Misto into camp with him. And while Misto stays here... Briney takes some of the men and heads for the ship Paul Parrot. What did they go over there for? Well, let me finish, Captain, and I'll tell you all I know. Aye, aye. Well, after Briney went to the ship, Misto was telling us how we'd all take charge of the ship and leave you and your crew here. So oh, that was it. About that time, this blooming black leopard which lay in here showed up. But he must have known someone was spying on us, because he walked right on past us, he did. But blow me down, Captain. Must have been Johnny and Sue listening to what was going on. All right, Dick and stow that. Let the man finish. Go ahead, mate. Go ahead. Well, when the leopard gets up here, we hears an awful ruckus we does. And when Misto and the rest of us get here, this blooming animal is in a death fight with another beast. All covered with spots, he was. A jaguar. The most ferocious of South American beasts, and you may lay to that, sir. Aye, a jaguar. That's what he must have been. Because when the two young'uns left here, the lad says, Come on, Jaggy, old boy, and blow me down if the animal didn't follow him like a kitten. That's the most amazing thing I've ever heard of. Lash me to a yard arm, it is, sir. It, it sounds fantastic. I, I can't understand it. Fantastic it is, sir. But so help me, I'll go with you to prove it. But what happened to Misto and the rest of the men who were here with you? Well, after the fight, and this blooming black leopard was killed... That blighter Misto went a trifle daft, and he walked straight for the ocean, he did. The last we heard him say was, it's a bad sign. This is the end. And blow me down, he went under. Good riddance, says I. Mm. And where are the rest of the men? Well, they're down at the camp. There are four of them left, counting myself. And now with our Captain Karsh gone, well, we're willing to throw in with you. We don't want no more trouble, we don't. I am glad to hear that. Well, get your men together and you can join us. But be quick about it. We've got to head for the Pile Parrot. Aye, aye, sir. We'll be right with you. Rock, step lively, me hearty. Step lively, me hearty. Flash me to a yard arm, Paul, you old buzzard. With all the excitement, I forgot you were here, I did. Dickon, you go back to the edge of the jungle and tell the men and Miss Wilson to join us here. Aye, sir. As soon as those men from Karsha's camp get here... We'll follow Johnny's and Sue's tracks for the Pal Parrot. Aye, aye, Captain. By the great horn spoon. Something tells me we'll soon be on our way home. Sue, there they are. They're looking over the ship to see what repairs must be made. And there's Briny standing on the beach watching the men at work. Don't speak so loud, Sue. We don't want them to hear us yet. Jackie, Jackie, be quiet. Don't give us away. He won't see us in the bushes, and he won't know we're here if he doesn't hear us. But, Johnny, what are you going to do? Nothing yet. I want to wait and see if he comes up this way alone. Johnny, look. What, Sue? Here comes Captain Dalton and Brother Ezra, and the rest are with them. You're right, Sue. Now I won't get a chance to do what I wanted. Look, Brian sees them, too. Dick and running ahead. How fast, you Newman Swamp? What are you up to? Come and find out, you pig legged porcupine. Porcupine, am I? I'll have your blooming dinner for this. Sue, you 
It looks like Dickon and Briny are going to fight. Yes, it looks like they're all going to fight. Briny's men are running toward Captain Dalton and the rest of them. Oh, I'm so afraid. If Dickon gets near him, Briny will use that hook hand on him, sure. Come on, come on, you yellow livin' swamp. Swamp, is it? Yeah. Hey, this. No. Yeah. Oh, Johnny, he swung at Dickon. And look. Dickens fell back, and Briny's hook hand caught in Dickens' peg leg. Look, he can't get it out. That's right. That hard oak in Dickens' peg leg is sound enough to hold Briny's hook hand. Come on. This is what I've been waiting for. What are you going to do? I'll show you. While the rest of them are all fighting, I'm going to get those diamonds away from Briny. What? All by yourself? No. This is where Jaggy comes in. Come on, Jaggy boy. <laughs> Well, this looks like a showdown. With Misto out of the way and with Briny's hook hand caught in Dickens' peg leg, with the help of the Jaguar, Johnny stands a good chance of getting the diamonds back. But the fight isn't over yet. Far from it. We can only hope that our friends get through this ordeal unharmed, as they have in the past. What will be the outcome of it? Be sure to listen for the next transcribed episode in the cruise of the Paul Parrot to find out. Until then, this is your Paul Parrot announcer, Dave Ward, saying goodbye. <laughs>